We're back. This is the VIB News Attack. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Mark Arman, and Anne Carr, International Woman of Mystery. We're here to enlighten, explain, discuss, and chew on the May 13th, 2014 meeting of the Vallejo City Council. Been away for a little while, but it's... Wake up time! Yes, that's right. It's wake up time. We'll be cutting through the cacophony and elementary cactus head. And we'll be having fun with it. Tonight's broadcast is a joint presentation of the Vallejo Independent Bulletin at ibvallejo.com and Ozcat Radio at 89.5 FM. Broadcasting live from the beautiful, exciting pandemonium that is the Townhouse Bar in downtown Vallejo. How's it going, Ann? Oh, just fine. Gosh, well, I've missed our little council talk, so uh, we got a lot to chew on tonight. So it's it's good getting back to it here. Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of a kind of a, a mixed meeting. There was no big headliner, but lots and lots of stuff. We kicked off with uh, some new employees for the city, which is uh, fabulous. We have a new fire chief. Yeah, so five new employees, and the top ranking one is a new fire chief, and he comes with just tons of credentials and tons of experience. He has, what is it, 35 years in fire management and degrees and certifications from all over the place. So um, provided that he sticks with us for a while, I think it could be a really good thing. My, my only reservation with him is that since he does have 35 years and he's 59 years old, I hope he's not looking at the the golden doors of retirement all too quickly so well time will tell hopefully he hangs around for a while and uh you know we look forward to having a permanent chief in the fire department uh there were also a whole bunch of uh events and things happening we've got i'll just kind of give you the rundown we got mm -hmm. a full and heroes day uh, there's going to be an event at the Veterans Memorial, May 26 at 11 a.m. May 22nd is Harvey Milk Day. We've got National uh, Police Week and a, uh, a presentation with Councilmember Bob Sampayan, a former Vallejo police officer. He was actually very, very emotional and, and tearful when he talked about uh, the fallen police officers and some, some of whom he knew personally. Um, but uh, police, uh, National Police Week is May 11th to 17th, and in Vallejo, Police Day will be May 15th, 2014. There will be a candlelight vigil on the steps of City Hall. I, did you get the time on that, end? Um, I want to say it's 7 o'clock. That's what yeah. I'm thinking, it's 7 o'clock. Yeah. That's what I heard, but we'll double-check that. The Vallejo Garden Tour, May 18th from 12 to 4. Right, they have 10 gardens on tour this year, and there will also be a free festival across from the City Museum that day. And of course, um, the garden tour tickets are a benefit fundraiser for the Vallejo Naval and Historical Museum. So, And, and that's not all. <laughs> There's going to be baseball in Vallejo this summer. Oh, that's right. And the Admirals were there to talk up the, the team coming back. They start their season June 3rd. They're going to have 39 home games. And they have office space now on Georgia Street, 444 Georgia. And, and, a, lot of, and a lot of homeless baseball players. <laughs> and homeless baseball players who are looking for host families. Yes. So um, if somebody has a spare bedroom, they can get a hold of the Admiral's management and they'll um, have insight into the game. Absolutely. Moving along through the meeting uh, in a linear progression this mm -hmm. evening, there was the public comment. Now, Ann, you got up there and you spoke a little bit about the badge and pass office, which is the monstrosity at the corner of Mare Island Way in Tennessee, a haven for homeless squatting, fires, chaos, anarchy, and it's right along <laughs> the corridor of a residential neighborhood. So, Right. So this was uh, following up on a meeting that some of the city managers had with the Vallejo Heights Neighborhood Association. And we got agreement from the city that they are going to include that building in the next batch of buildings that they try to demolish from the North Mirror Island area. Uh, so that's the good news about that building. The bad news is that we don't have a specific time as to when that might happen, but at least some, uh, a little, an inch of forward progress. So um, we can't see that building go away fast enough. Absolutely. And as far as the badge and pass offices go, as is concerned, my comment would be Gee, I sure hope there's a happy ending. I love a happy ending. You got it. Let's see it go away. It's a mess. Yeah, it needs to go away, and, and hopefully it won't go away in a fire, which would be uh, a really bad problem for the neighborhood and potentially for the homeless people who have been uh, bunking down in there. So. Yeah, I've been out there myself in the middle of the night with a camera when it's, it's burning on at least one occasion. Right. So it's, it's a problem it's a building. 
Moving on to uh, uh, problems and things like that are the the saga of green tanks, large green <laughs> tanks in front of the Vallejo parking structure. Yeah, I think I think maybe uh, we should just put t- antennas on them and call them Martians. Yeah, what do you think? S- you've seen them. They're there. They're ugly. What's the story? Well, we got a little lowdown on that from David Kleinschmidt uh, uh, and and uh, city staff. Basically, there is lead and hydrocarbon that is showing up in the water um, that's being pumped out of the, the parking structure. Uh, a lot of that um, had to do with boring. Some people may find it boring, but it was about <laughs> the type of boring you do to get soil samples and things like that. And right. apparently the deal is, I mean, they, they drilled, they took samples, everything looked good, and then when the groundwater started moving through things that were adjacent, sort of lead and hydrocarbon and all kinds of gook started flowing in there. Um, right. The, the good thing is, is for Bay Area residents, there's water quality, there's a wa- water quality board that's concerned about groundwater runoff that might be contaminated getting into the Bay. And so that's the, the thing that's holding things up. Bad news is, is that the city doesn't really know where the contaminants are coming from and how long it's going to take to get rid of them. And so we're in a holding pattern, essentially. Those tanks are going to be there for a while until we can consistently show that there's no more seepage into of, of any contaminants into the groundwater. Right, and really the thing is they're waiting until it's clean enough to discharge into the storm drain. And until then, we've got green tanks, which are, are both unsightly and, as Councilman Bermesner brought up, a potential safety issue uh, because it creates a place for people to lurk. Right. Although one interesting little tidbit about that that came out after Council Member Meisner's comment was that there are patrols that go around the parking structure with electronic tags. And so if there, we got an agreement from Kleinschmidt that if there isn't an, an electronic tag already there behind the tanks, they'll put one in. So that's a good, uh, Absolutely. You know, good so- measure. And, and, and while a Midsummer Night's Nightmare may be lurking behind the green tanks, I just want to mention that on, on July 26 at Vallejo's Hans Park will be a presentation of A Midsummer Night's Dream, Vallejo Shakespeare Festival. Right, Shakespeare in the Park at Hans Park. And so that came from GVRD. Uh, GVRD was here tonight at the City Council to talk about essentially getting tax money from the Glen Cove tax parcels. And so that will be money that is going from the city into GVRD specifically. And so while they were there, they pitched a couple of their events. One is Shakespeare in the Park. And let's just clarify for our leaders, GVRD is the Greater Vallejo Recreation District. And that's the entity that runs our parks and a lot of other facilities, including the the sports facility out on Mare Island. Um, They run the the Cunningham Pool is theirs, I believe. Right, right. A whole bunch of stuff. So they have uh, GVRD operates 25 parks in the city and four community centers. They've just taken over the management of the Mare Island Sports Complex, which apparently is phenomenal and has all sorts of facilities for soccer and baseball and basketball and I don't know what. Um, So they talked up a whole bunch of stuff and... um, including something coming up for next year. They're going to be running a rena- an Italian Renaissance fair, Molto Bene. Now, the Blue- kind of Italians I know is like, <laughs> hey, Goomba, you know what I'm talking about? You no, know? this is you, a you, Renaissance, you, I know, Renascimento, I, per favore. I, it's going to be yeah, at Blue you, Rock. You, see, you know Italian <laughs> Italians. I know Jersey Italians, okay? <laughs> Blue Rock Springs so, Park. So that'll be something to look forward yes. to. Uh, so, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, there was talk about C, D, B, G. What the hell does that mean, Anne? Enlighten <laughs> us, enlighten us. The acronym, together, acronym city says CDBG, Community, Community Development, Development Block, Block Grants. Grant. This is money that we get essentially from the federal government, and it has to do, it's um, a portion of the money that comes from, or it's related to housing development money that we yes, get in no, the city. No, Anne. We're, we are getting a little wonkish, you know, and some of our listeners <laughs> are, are, are probably sitting there and, and, and they're just... We're not sure. Yes, we are. <laughs> then we're awake, but we're very puzzled. There you okay. have it. Okay, so we're getting wonky here, but we'll try not yes. to um, get into too many acronyms. But basically, it's federal money. CDBG is federal money. And... Um, 
they last year they got approval for two-year agreements so essentially there's not too much news coming out of this there's a, a, a series of nonprofits in the city that get some money for social services like senior meals etc right, right. Um, but the the headline that uh, for, for tonight with the CDBG money is that the uh, project from mean streets to green streets is continuing to move forward for St. Right. Vincent's which is, Hill. Which is Sarah Nichols, uh, something she's pioneered, and it's about bringing, uh, uh, bringing some green, bringing some right. green into the urban environment. Right, and, and a lot of it is uh, Sarah Nichols and the Solano Advocates for Green Environment, SAGE, they've just done brilliant work in terms of showing how the city used to have many more trees and many more landscape streets and a lot of that went away during the redevelopment years of the 60s. They want to bring back the trees and the landscaping. So that's what they're about and they're getting money from CDBG to do engineering and design work um, ahead of doing actual project work. So um, that's just really exciting and hopefully that project will go through and uh, lead a path for similar projects throughout the city. All right, something positive that's going to improve quality of life for folks in Vallejo. Um, the other thing with the CDG, CDBG, if I can say it, uh, <laughs> uh, monies, uh, was an issue that Councilmember Sampayan uh, raised, which is that there are some entities that are getting free rent from the city of Vallejo, and that was something he raised, and that was something he objected to. So the actual vote, uh, he was the one dissenting vote because he has some discomfort with certain entities getting a free rent arrangement uh, uh, through the city and so on. Right. His, his um, concern was about some nonprofits getting both free rent and CDBG and money. money. And yes. he thought that that really wasn't fair to the broad scope of, of nonprofits. Basically, city support for social services provided by nonprofits has been cut since the bankruptcy and has inched back, but uh, by and large, the the budgets for nonprofits were just devastated. Absolutely, and we so saw uh, you know it's a real case of have and have not. So there are a couple of uh, nonprofits that continue to get some support, and many others that are just barely hanging on. And so there was there was concern about. Um, you know, spreading around some of these social services dollars. The next open period for grant funding won't be until 2015. So grant funds are kind of tied up until then. Yeah, I mean, the amount of money that a lot of the nonprofits get, I mean, it's, it's not a huge amount of money from, from these funds and through the city. So for our, our beleaguered nonprofits, we have to spread the money as best we can and, 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 and make do. Uh, moving on to another headliner, uh, Human Relations Commission. Right, right. So that was um, one of the ordinances for tonight was to reestablish the Human Relations Commission, which I believe was dissolved back in 2008. I'm not actually certain of that date. Um, it was dissolved around the time of the budget crisis. And so now they're looking at getting it going again. Uh, there were some community concerns about whether or not the ordinance was written um, to have enough community input and that they would have more meeting, enough meetings to make it meaningful. Um, Councilmember McConnell had some um, amendments to the ordinance to make sure that the new committee or the newly, uh, newly formed committee, reformed committee, could have enough meetings to make their work, their work worthwhile. Um, and then the other thing that's interesting about it is they expanded the scope of human relations to include things around se sexual identity and gender orientation. So um, make it a little bit more modern, as uh, city manager Dan Keene called it. So one other piece of news tonight from council actually came from a pre-meeting to the uh, major city council meeting, and that was of the former redevelopment agency, the successor to the redevelopment agency. To fast forward to the bottom line, basically, there are 32 properties that were part of the redevelopment agency that are now being transferred to the city. Of those 32 properties, 15 of them will be for sale. 
and this will uh, free up some money to the city. The, the sale proceeds don't go directly to the city. They get distributed among different tax entities. Um, but there's an aggregate value of $3.2 million with those 15 right. properties. Well, the bottom line, as I understand it, with this uh, maneuver is that um, a lot of those monies are going to go uh, you know, directly to the city, a fair, a fair amount of it, as, as, to compared, as compared to uh, um, if it had been in redevelopment, we wouldn't have gotten that, that chunk. So that, in a sense, if I'm right, tell me if I'm right, Ann. Am right. I, am I understanding this right? It, basically, we're, be, because there's no longer redevelopment, right? Right. Yeah, we're getting a bigger... Well, I don't know that we're getting no. a bigger chunk. Um, we will, if the properties, the 15 properties are sold, we get some percentage of that sales right. money comes directly back to the city. Uh, whether or not that is as great as the money we used to get from the redevelopment agency is not clear to me. Um, but the redevelopment agency was dissolved in 2012, of course, across the state. And, and that is what it is. So um, the, the, real, the real benefit of the move tonight was that it removes uncertainty for development in, right. in the downtown area. So at least we're moving forward with some of these properties that have been kind of hanging out there since, uh, since redevelopment went away and so Right. And so any developer wanting to do development work downtown principally and in the waterfront area will have clarity and a firm guideline as to how they can proceed. And I think that's about all the time we have for tonight, Anne. I think we, we touched on a lot of stuff. It was kind of a chaos and a cacophony. I hope we <laughs> clarified it a bit for our readers. And uh, signing off, uh, I guess that's about it. Yeah, over and out for tonight. I'll be the same, baby. <laughs>